Hello, and uh, welcome to the inaugural Kitbox uh, stream where I'm drawing and I'm answering questions based on yeah what people see in the chat at the moment. It's Patreon only, um, but I'll have this available for everyone to have a look at at some point. So I guess first of all, uh, can everyone hear me okay? And yeah, there's about a billion second delay, so I'll just wait to see if I can see people saying um, saying if it's okay sound wise. Yep, hear me fine. Okay, brilliant, good. This is already going way better than I assumed it would. But yeah, I'd just like to thank uh, thank my wife G for helping me get all this sorted out because I am an absolute technological dinosaur, so I would not be able to be doing this without any of her help. Um, yeah, so this is the uh, yeah, inaugural one, uh, the first one, the first inaugural one, because what I assume is going to happen is that it's going to start off as something and then it's eventually going to turn into something else and I'm going to be incredibly embarrassed by the first ones. So I'll let you know when the f first real one starts, but up until then, going to be practice ones. So yeah, um, I've just got Open Canvas here, which is my um, program of choice that I use for my comic stuff. And um, I'm not actually very used to doing digital inking, so uh, you'll probably notice a bit of a difference in how things look depending on, you know, between the comics and the other stuff I do and this. But this will just be good practice to kind of get get used to, to this because I'm going to have to be doing that at some point probably. Um, yeah, I mean, just a bit of background. I did try to start my Nuzlocke way back in the time, way back in the day, uh, digitally. But the result of that was so horrendous that I decided no, and it scarred me for about 12 years. Uh, but I'm finally coming back to trying to do some digital line art for this, and eventually maybe I'll get the comic done like that as well. So, yeah, so welcome everyone. Just a little bit of a background uh, for me, just in case somehow you've gotten here without knowing who I am and what I do. Uh, but yeah, Kid Fox, I um, mainly do comics. I've uh, I guess done some Nuzlocke Pokemon comics and I've done a lot of kind of anthro uh, sci-fi stuff in the past and at the moment my main comic is one called In Our Shadow which is a kind of post-apocalyptic um, story set about 50,000 years in the future where humanity's died out and eventually you realize why and how that happened but in the meantime animals who were capable of doing so kind of got into the ruins left behind by people and slowly evolved amongst the stuff we left behind to sort of replace us in that niche. So it's sort of like a, uh, I don't know, sci-fi, secret and nim sort of, sort of thing. So yeah, um, the way this is going to go is I'll be taking questions, checking how good I am at doing some multitasking by answering questions based on some lore and also drawing at the same time. So if it turns out I can only do one of those at once, um, I guess that's how it's going to be. So um, we'll see how this goes. But yeah, uh, welcome, welcome Saber, welcome Mordak, welcome Omega, welcome Jeff. Uh, yeah, this is this is gonna gonna be fun. So hopefully you can stick around for as long as you're able and ask some stuff and check out how this goes. So let's get this one out of the way and we'll get things sorted out. So I'll turn this one off, make a new layer there. All right. So uh, okay. So yeah, again, I'm probably gonna be pretty bad at reading the chat to start off with. So. If you say something um, and I don't see it, just let me know again and I'll, uh, I'll probably see it at some point, maybe the third or fourth time. So I'm just having a look now. Let's see, as long as pointy sideburns come through, it should be recognizable. Yep, you're right. Yeah, that's uh, that's basically the through line between all my stuff. If there's some sideburns in there, that's my my signature, I suppose. Um, how long have I been arting for? Um, have, as long as I've been alive, minus four, I guess, so 30-something years. Yeah, I kind of never stopped. People are always like, oh, how did you get onto drawing? I'm like, you, you get onto drawing? You, I just have been doing it. So there's no, yeah, I mean, I started off, you know, just doing little, little fan stuff with Transformers and all those old shows I used to watch as a kid. And, um, you know, I guess that's where all my love of kind of mecha and all that sort of thing came from. So watching Transformers, watching Robotech, watching, you know, Star Blazers, all those kind of things kind of got me into that. And, yeah, just just never not done it. I did, you know, do quite a lot of school, which translates to me having a lot of time to not be paying attention and just drawing in margins and stuff. 
So yeah, just be constantly sort of working on it, building it up. Um, but lately I've just, you know, been putting all my skill points into doing stuff fast. And that's kind of like what happens with a comic. So technically wise, my skills haven't really developed that much uh, in that time, but I just have gotten a lot of, a lot faster at doing things. So it's, you kind of, you can't, you can't, can't do everything. What else have we got here? Uh, what should we do first? Uh, I need to draw some robots. Yes, you do. No way to get better at something unless you do it. Omega. Um, it is one of those things where people hate doing it. And yeah, every time I would watch like a really well animated anime about Mecha, I'm like, how did you draw this robot a hundred times? <laughs> like, I, God, it's, it's a nightmare. But um, I don't know, you kind of got to kind of got to like it and find a Mecha style that you like. Could be sort of organic or very angular or whatever. But yeah, it's, um, they're a lot of fun. And um, it's not an incredibly common thing for people to do. So it's sort of like an auto standout if you draw a lot of mecha stuff sometimes. Um, have I been into furry stuff about as long as all that? Well, um, yeah, kind of. I guess I guess before furry was a thing, I would always, always like that sort of thing. So I'd like, you know, watch Danger Mouse and um, uh, actually a lot of the main ones you'd assume I, I never really watched, like Biker Mice from Mars or... Uh, Stuff like that, yeah, I never really saw any of that. You know, Ninja Turtles, obviously. But in terms of, like, yeah, I guess I've been into the sort of anthro side of things for as long as it's had that name. And, yeah, no, I've just always, I just always really enjoyed drawing animal, animals and animal people and stuff like that. Uh, oh, hey, Amiboe? Uh, big fan. Cool. I uh, hope it isn't well for you. Yeah, it's been good. It's been... <laughs> Kind of just a nerve-wracking watching the clock uh, until this all started, and um, yeah, you know, you know how you think about stuff the first time you do something new. And actually, I've got to be aware that I talk too fast when I'm nervous, so I've got to slow things down. But yeah, apart from that, it's been painting up some Marvel Crisis Protocol miniatures. Uh, yeah, it's sort of a, a, a tabletop game by Atomic Mass Games that I'm getting into because, as you may know, I also do a lot of painting of kind of your Warhammer. Warhammer 40k figures um, for a commission and just on my own. So yeah, getting into a Marvel one looks really looks really fun. So yeah, that's what I've been doing earlier this day in particular. Uh, Omega, do I think the Immortals will ever appear again, or will they just make cameos? Oh, my comic ones. Um, I mean they're always there. I've kind of got sort of a few different um kind of and through universes so there aren't any in the in our shadow stuff but in the i guess the generation timeline going from industrial revelations up to nicole's dark yeah they're, they're usually in there they're, they pop up from time to time and uh, so if i ever do you know another comic set in that kind of timeline yeah not that i have any plans uh in the immediate future for that but uh, yeah they'll show up um all those, all those guys that are still alive, a lot of them kind of got, um, by, by restored generation, most of them are kind of gone. Uh, but yeah, the ones that are still around, certainly uh, Diamond, I guess, which is my most powerful sort of immortal character, is like a dinosaur thing. Um, yeah, he'll be around probably if there's anything happening in the future. And in Nicole's arc, uh, it's a bit of a spoiler. I won't say anything. That, that's a novel that I'm perpetually always have just about finished, but have never just done the last little step to get it sorted out. But when I do, yeah, there's a lot of immortals happening in there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a fun feeling. You'd think I would be over kind of the anxiety because, you know, I'm a teacher as my day job, but it's kind of different when I'm in front of people that I care about. I don't know, like it's, um, you guys are sort of more, when, it, when it's a bunch of kids, it's different than sort of contemporaries. But yeah, I'll, I'll get more into the swing of things and um, change sort of how things are going. Uh, I ended up with them before I knew it, had a name of Mecha's blue mind. Uh, yeah, we kind of were a bit late to the whole kind of Mecha um, thing in the, in, I guess, the you know, neck of the woods, planet wise. But yeah, I guess the first ones, the first anime, yeah, that were sort of mainstream, sort of of that type was Evangelion, and that absolutely blew my mind when I was in high school. So as soon as I saw that, actually, you probably, 
notice a lot of my designs have kind of got a lot of Evangelion sort of inspiration. I guess if you look at like Astrida's arms, that's kind of what un the Unit One or all the all the all the Ava's arms look like, sort of. And the heads of the the most recent Striders in in our shadow, they kind of also sort of Unit One, but a rat. Like so, that wasn't on purpose, but that kind of just happened. Uh, but everything's come from something, so so that's all right. Um, what animes and how many animes inspired us, GRG in our shadows? Oh, well, I just, uh, I guess, went back in time a bit. I just answered that, I think. Uh, Evangelion, uh, big one. Um, yeah, Macross, uh, another big one. Um, those are oh, Transformers, but not, not, so, not so much, I guess. Uh, those are probably probably the big ones. Uh, Johan, possibly favorite character? Yeah, yeah, he's a, <laughs> he's good. He, he'll probably show up. He's a, <laughs> he'll probably show up in something else. Actually, he does definitely show up in something else, but that's a bit further later on down the track. Um, yeah, he's, he was a lot of fun to write for, kind of less like a crazy immortal. Oh, for people who don't know, he's sort of mainly in the, uh, kind of steampunk comic I did called Industrial Revelations. Yeah, Johan. Who, yeah, I won't say anything else about him, but he's he's like an immortal guy, and he's sort of crazy, and he kind of just has this life cycle that he goes through, and yeah, he he's a, he's a lot of fun. So he he uh he definitely is still kicking about doing stuff. I guess if you haven't seen it, he was in something else that I did a long time ago called Witch Hunter Slayer. Uh, should be on DA somewhere buried in the in the depths, um, but that was another kind of black and white comic where it was set about 150 years before industrial revelations kind of in like 1650 or something uh but it's a short and it's it's weird it, like if you've seen my early stuff it's very uh it's very visceral very uh, it's it's like i was really young and i was trying to tackle these big issues and stuff i was thinking about but i was also simultaneously an idiot who didn't know anything and was very very cringy and so yeah the early stuff's a little heavy and also ridiculous and uh yeah so i don't know take that with a grain of salt keep that in mind if you ever go back and look at that stuff but yeah there is another johan thing already if you haven't seen it um and yeah it'll come uh <laughs> the grand army of madagascar shall prepare the sacred defense of hippity hoppity stay off of property actually <laughs> um that phrase i wasn't aware of until i started watching some marvel crisis protocols um streams of games and whenever they use toad as a character they always say that so indeed also applicable here high fantasy yeah that's always good um evangelion never watched it huh? well um i would recommend as an old man do not watch the new one uh the kind of re something something parentheses something alive i don't know whatever the new ones are titled like watch the original fantastic for 1995 it's, in, it's absolutely unbelievable um incredibly high concept amazing themes incredible designs um probably a little bit fan servicey for my taste these days but it's uh but uh yeah it's um it's real good um curious to see where in our shadow goes definitely see the lemurs is making a big o um <laughs> Uh, well, they did make um, something sort of like that uh, as a commission that I did. I did some. Oh wait, yeah, um, yeah. They not a big O, but something similar to that. They certainly have been shown to have, and they'll be back in it. Um, in terms of where in our shadows going, um, up until this point, and I guess if if you're a patron, you're about twenty five pages ahead. So I'll try not to spoil anything for anyone else. But what you've seen, like up until about page. 80 or 100 it's 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 basically a giant not misdirect but it takes a big turn everything that's happened up until now is kind of just to be to set up the characters and to set up their flaws and it's about to get very different so yeah i'm, I'm excited to to take it forward as well and i'm trying to do it as fast as i can but like if you've ever done a comic in color it takes it's like a weird like time time moves differently when you're doing a comic like it it feels like it's taking oh uh, yeah it, it, it's a big investment in time so it takes me a long time to do them so i'm always frustrated that i can't do it faster but at the same time i don't want to do it less good of quality than it is so it'll happen when it happens but yeah i'm excited to 
show everyone where it goes. Um, show me nuts that I've had a beer with them. <laughs> yes, no, that was a good one. That was a good little sketch that uh, turned into a proper, proper, proper commish. So that, that was a cool one. Uh, Lima's a tough notch, best writing. I don't know about that. Lima's being best writing ever. They're fun. The best thing about them is that I can just if their if their speech doesn't fit like where I want it to go in a page, I can just make words shorter or bigger or add words or change words as much as I want to make it fit a speech bubble. So yeah, they're, they're a lot of fun to write for. So yeah, I'm looking forward to having them back in there. Uh, they, we do end up going back to Madagascar. That's a little spoil um, to see, to pick up where they've uh, taken things after after six six years. Yes, Modak early teen cringe is, is the worst kind. Uh, fan project club in the future yeah maybe uh, again going back to the comic thing I'm, I'm sort of hesitant to do big fan projects and collabs because I just haven't got time for it like I'm still working my goal as, as I've probably made clear is that I eventually want to make enough on Patreon and commissions to um, to be the only to have that be the only thing that I do but um, at this point mm, we'll see how it goes so um, until I can stop teaching which I it's okay. I mean, I teach incredible subjects like um, digital art and Dungeons and Dragons, but you've got to have, you know, the right sort of clients for it. And it's, it can be a bit soul crushing a lot of the time. So I'm looking to get out of that. And yeah, I'd, I'd be open to do some more projects if I had time. But at the moment, yeah, just because of the old got to make the money to live thing. I I can't probably. Um, commissions and Limitech, yep. Um, oh yes, the Megas XLR. Yes, I thought it was. That's why I was like, I chuckled and was about to say that, but I was like, I wasn't a hundred percent. But yes, of course, I am now. Uh, I feel that we're writing. Yeah. Uh, need to say, yeah, get the good stuff set up. Yeah, you got to set them up. And like, if people can hang on for a hundred pages, then it is really rewarding to have everything set up before um, before the stuff happens and you have a reason to care about it. Uh, which is good. You just got to make sure interesting stuff's happening while you're doing this setup, which sometimes I'm not sure if I'm doing a great job of that at the moment, but um, yeah, can't, can't win them all. Uh, lingo that kills me. Yeah, I, I do like it. That's the problem. I always think as you do, I think, uh, what would the voices of these characters sound like and do like, you know, your, your, um, your casting in your head of like, oh, who would be good to play these if it was like a cartoon or something when i get to the le the lemurs i'm like what does this actually sound like like i no matter what i do i would definitely offend somebody if i ever had someone actually voicing out this stuff but on paper yeah it's fun it's fun to write the lingo i do like that um do i get notification on pay patreon for likes uh i do yes thank you i do i do get those um so that's great i always love seeing those come in I do 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 sit with steepled fingers for a few minutes after I put a page up. It's like, hmm, I don't know how long it'll take for someone to like this thing. Uh, but yeah, so thank you very much. Keep them coming. I do that. Uh, that makes it all worthwhile just knowing people are out there liking things and commenting on things. But yeah, I, I get that wanting to watch a bunch of pages at once, especially if it's like a, a fight scene where, you know, three pages might take me three weeks to do, but you can read them in three seconds. So yeah saving them up that that's fine but yeah likes definitely coming through so thank you very much uh it's a crime what happened to mega's xlr yeah anything with a robot <laughs> or a spaceship that's cool is gonna get cut short that's just how it goes and then five years after that there's a huge fan cult following and they're like oh what did we do but it's too late now it will happen every time but at least you know at least we've always got a little bit at least it happened a little bit and there's always be something new that'll come along that'll get cancelled before it's time that we can enjoy as well uh why did you choose to stream these on youtube instead of something like piccato um don't know oh uh, well as i said uh my wife uh, uh georgie's already streaming on patreon i'm sorry on on youtube so she showed me how to do everything um i don't know it's just a decent just a good platform i don't know much about piccato that would involve me having to learn something and I ain't got no time for that. So uh, that's probably the main reason. Otherwise, not not that fussy. And you know, things might change in the future, I might go to something else. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I teach D&D. &D. Uh, yeah, so the set of, 
the, the story behind that is um, in about 2016, I decided to finally put forward digital art as a subject because the school didn't have that. Um, and I was umming and ahhing about it for ages. I'm like, oh, should I do this? Like, would anyone actually want to do this? And like, have I got the right to even ask this? Are they just going to be like, stay in your lane, idiot? Um, so I, I did eventually do that after thinking about it for a bit. And that was quite popular. And then a lot of the, di a lot of the um, digital art kids, you know, they were the sort who would also be drawn to other things like D&D. &D. And I, I um, up at that point, I started to run an after school group uh, for Dungeons and Dragons and other kind of tabletop stuff and playing Yu-Gi-Oh and things like that. Uh, and the, you know, the assistant principal would come by and like see me, like you luckily uh, see me doing a good job in that one second that I was. And so I'm like, hmm, I wonder if I could push my luck. So I'd, I'd gotten drunk with power about how well the digital art was going. So I eventually decided to, to pitch Dungeons and Dragons as a class, just almost as a joke. I think it might have been a joke. I think some students said, oh, you should do that. I'm like, yeah, okay. So I put it forward as an idea. And then uh, I got tapped on the shoulder by a different assistant principal, uh, one, of the, one, of the old, one of the old guard. And they brought me into their office and they said, about this subject, um, Dungeons and Dragons, isn't that, isn't that some sort of cult? And uh, they sort of stared me like right in the eye and like made me explain what Dungeons and Dragons was and that it wasn't a cult and that all the satanic panic stuff from the 70s uh, was all just ridiculous and crazy and but all kind of all they knew about it was this this old stuff they'd heard in news stories and, and back in the day so I was like no no it's actually got really good educational value a lot of kind of like you know team building and working together and crafting stories and there's maths and there's all this stuff so it's actually quite easy to justify so yeah um I got a, I got a bit of budget for it bought a bunch of starter sets got some books and yeah, it was it uh it's done done really well. Like it's a class that relies relies really heavily on the kids actually wanting to do it. Um, but uh, it's uh it's been really good. Yeah. So if I could just teach that, I'd probably just do that. But for every one D and D class I've got, there's like nine terrible other things that you have to do as a teacher that will just crush you eventually. <laughs> so I want to get out before before that happens. Um. <laughs> Yeah, so that that was a lot of fun starting that off, and yeah, I've got that again next year, so that'll that'll be pretty pretty great. Um, yeah, so in most schools it's probably not a subject, but in mine it is because I somehow managed to make it happen. That'll be the one thing I miss when I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> uh, the scientist, Australian naturalist. Um, Oh yeah, Destroyer Men. Yes, I, I remember that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, weird crossovers. This planet's too small. Uh, things, things, things keep on cycling through over and over again. Did anything uh, done by Michael Bay inspire influence? No, never. Michael Bay, no. Uh, I, it's kind of I don't know. You either you either die or live long enough to become the thing you hate or whatever they say. So I do like big explosions. I do like, um, I do like big robots, but I, uh, I abhor the Transformer films. I know a lot of people like them, and I guess looking back on them now, they may not be as bad as I remember them being. But no, I just I was just a, I'm just a diehard G1 Transformers fan. When I first when I saw the first one initially, I just it was it just blew me away that I was seeing a live action Transformers. But after a little bit, I was like, wait a minute. This actually is really bad, actually. So I, and then I watched the second one. I'm like, this is actually even worse. I mean, this is my opinion. I don't want to, if, if you like them, that's, you know, all the power to you. But it's, yeah, it's all, it's all, it's all opinions, but I do not like them. Um, and so if I was influenced by them in any way, uh, probably not. I've always done explosions. Like if you look back at my stuff, even the old, crossover stuff from when I was in, in you know about 13 14 there was just explosions and robots everywhere so that's just something that's always been part of my DNA but um then you then you Transformers stuff looks good I, I'm hopefully I'm optimistic about Rise of the Beasts I think that might be good I love the cast they've got for that um the, the aesthetics look okay I think I think that sort of look works better for Beast Wars and kind of since Bumblebee They've, they've refined the designs a little bit to be a bit more like what I was expecting when the 07 movie came out. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So my opinions on, on the Bay movies might change. 
satanic panic. Ma- oh yeah, so it made it everywhere. Tom Hanks, he'll uh, if he's in a thing, he'll um he'll make sure it spreads to the the furthest reaches of. of, of I was going to say the galaxy. Australia might as well be the furthest reaches of the galaxy, as far as the rest of the world's concerned. But yeah, it did, it did make it down here too. Uh, it's like that little video where they depict RPG players as motorcycle riding cigarette smoking cool kids. Oh, we are, for sure, all, all of us. Uh, several friends who are teachers. Yeah, I think everyone's got several friends and or parents and or friends' parents uh, who are teachers. It's just, I don't know, it's, it, it's different. I guess, you know, turns out there's a lot of kids in the world and they keep dang making more of the, the dang things. So I suppose it's always going to need to be teachers. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good. I don't want to, I don't want to take teaching down for anyone who really enjoys it. It's just... I've never really been that good at working with kids or, oh, I don't know, it's uh, it's fine. I like it okay. I think I do it fairly okay. It's just, it's a mix of just, uh, it, I've done it for too long and I just really want to do other stuff is more the main, the main thing. Oh yes, a request or two. Yes, let's let's get that started. I get, the problem is, I suppose with that is, uh, I probably won't be looking at the chat while I'm doing that. So I'm just probably just going to be doing whatever mindless vamping I can I can uh, do while I'm spending my energy drawing. Um, but before I do that, yeah, tell me your request, Omega, and I'll get onto that. Um, um, yeah, so I'll have a look at the last little couple of questions here. Role-playing develops that sort of thing. Socialization is socialization. It sure does. Uh, autistic as hell. Yep, I am also a little of that as hell, but can think... Thank Tabletop Gaming for making me pretty natural socially. Yeah, absolutely. And like most of the the kids I have, you know, they might have uh, one or two reasons for not wanting to engage with, you know, the world at large all the time. And I think it definitely helps. So absolutely. First they want a slight pass, Transformers-wise, cause first attempt. But the G1 will always be my favorite of the bunch. Yes. I watch that probably every every five months or something. The rest just got worse over time. Yes. Um, I didn't even watch the last one, the last night of the night of the last day of the night, or whatever it was called. Yeah, I haven't even seen it. Rise of the Beast, Tis Phase, Beast, yeah, Beast Wars. <clears throat> Beast Wars or Beasties, as I think it was in Canada. Definitely, definitely great. Even though in the first season they had no idea what they were doing, they still somehow brought out a show with some of the best, some of the best characters. Little cast for, for like budgetary reasons, only worked in its favor. Fantastic. Um, back to the Transformers. Yeah, GoBots. <laughs> GoBots is incredible. So good. Um, I want a glorious Wolf Griffin boy to return. Missed that version of Silver Bolt. Yeah, I, I'm. Yeah, he, he was pretty great. I do like original Silver Bolt as well. Got to love a Concord with the fear of flying. Uh, I say I'm into high fantasy, but then I played any Final Fantasy like 14 in the game. Welcome to the magical land of Eosa. Zia. Now hop into this giant mech and fight the other giant mech. Yeah, I feel like every every movie synopsis should end with, with that sentence. I think it would make it a lot better. Uh, on a skyscraper with a backdrop of short and tall ones is in a pose similar to Ultimate Spidey in the Volume 1 cover. His black sketches in the white socks. Uh, I assume this is... Uh, uh, Johan, who's who's on the skyscraper? Well, I can get started. Uh, let's see. Let me just see what's going on. Uh, you already see. Yet. Um, uh, who is that again? Might have to. Oh, is that your um kind of armored guy? Let me just see about that. Whoop. Oh yeah, actually, um, as I said in the descriptions, um, oh, sorry, in, on Patreon, I'd kind of like to keep it sort of either related to my comic world stuff or, yeah, something quick and simple 
or um yeah or maybe like it can be it can be sort of like a, an oc but probably something you just described to me because i yeah i um i just looked across and i'm not logged into D, uh, D, da right now so i can't get any sort of refs for that so uh, just give me a description uh something to do yeah comic stuff your own characters that's all good uh but yeah something a little simple um <laughs> yeah they don't yeah silver bolt um beast wars one hasn't had a new model release they did a new plaque arachnid yeah um yeah they don't give beast wars a lot of love they kind of just cycle through the same couple of guys over and over again they did they started doing um, masterpiece beast wars and i got most of them um but uh yeah they kind of stopped and they'll probably just do primal again or something and then megatron again but i never brought out pterosaur and i was really annoyed about that so yeah silverbolt kind of same sort of thing uh, beast wars wise they're not gonna have a new model for a while probably but yeah if someone's got uh that's something they'd like. I'm just realizing now, half an hour in or whatever, that it's been a blank white screen for about 25 minutes. So I probably should do something. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, so if anyone's got something simple, just let me know. And because of the delay, that'll probably come through in about 10 minutes. So... Oh, whoop! Uh, Wolf and if you lean this smoking a cigar. Yeah, all right. Uh, another sketch in mind if a bit dialogue heavy. Um, yeah, all right. Well, yeah. Let me know that. I'll do. I'll do. I'll do. Wolf and uh, if you lean this smoking a cigar though. See if um, this is going to be from memory. So do not get on in the case if it's not exactly right. So let's see. Something like this. Yeah, okay, so this uh, I'll do as good as I can digital-wise, uh, but uh, yeah, we'll see how this goes. At least I've got an eraser and all that stuff that the kids are using these days. So normally it's just straight on the paper. Boop, 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 that wasn't right. Yeah, so this is a character yeah commander wolf's a wolf character as long as i can remember how this goes oh wait got some hair i think forgive me for uh yeah getting this a little bit wrong got this stuff yeah lemurs would absolutely have cigars they um you know they um they only live for whatever 15 years or something so you might as well might as well enjoy it, enjoy it while you can how big would they have lima size cigars or would they have gigantic ones and no, sorry just going into chat a namia pinup all right for anyone who doesn't know who that is namia is um oh she was in in the in the terrible recentish comic i did the uh two steps forward she's uh sia who's my sort of half god character's mom who uh yeah definitely mostly clothing optional so we'll see how that one goes but yeah let's yeah let's see about this oh god how do you oh, 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 that i do not like let's make that a little bit let the line get suddenly big yeah that's better cigar yeah the um actually i think liam has already have had cigars in the comic i think general jet flash probably definitely did I feel like it's kind of like a um, a Galaxy Quest sort of situation with the lemurs, where a lot of the time they'll just do stuff if they, you know, they, they don't really understand why they're doing it, but it was um, it was sort of um, something that humans did, so they must have done it for a reason. 
It's like, oh, this is, I think, is uh, is kind of killing us. Oh, but there must be some reason why they did it. So, uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll just smoke these cigars as well. But, um, yeah, definitely looking like a bait, I guess. And I think the armor was pretty, yeah, pretty cool. A lot of kind of curves. Oh, good, curves. The easiest thing to do consistently in a digital drawing when he's not very good at it. Right. Uh, yeah, that's a curve, more or less. So I'll bring this around. Yeah, so Jet Flash, yeah, was the was kind of the general in um in the first in our shadow, uh, who yeah, kind of had the really awesome smart idea of taking all the um, human technology back to Madagascar and uh, just just taking it all, just a little cultural appropriation. That's fine. And uh, yeah, she had these big 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 sort of. Uh, mirror shades, big aviators. So yeah, they're absolutely gonna gonna have some cigars. So I feel like I feel like this is like a cultural exchange where we've got uh, maybe maybe Wolf sort of bringing in uh, some cigars for the lemurs as part of that, sort of getting reintroduced to the world. Yeah, because um, spoilers for the comic that I did eight years ago and I guess if you want if you're watching this later on you can just pause this and go and quickly read that 450 page comic and then unpause this and watch the rest but the uh, lemurs live on Madagascar as they generally do um, but through various things that happened in the story the whole country got destroyed and wiped off the map so um, they had to sort of rebuild from scratch and we haven't really checked in with them since uh, since that happened, which was six years ago, kind of in in, in comic timeline, uh, and yeah, we'll see we'll see how it's going. So as part of the rebuilding process, we've got some important cultural human cultural stuff like cigars coming in. So yeah, this is pretty smart of me. I'm doing the sketch lines with a very thick pen. That's okay. It'll be fine. So yeah, let's go with some lemurs now. Uh, yeah, always a bit like unsure. Oh, good. Another another thing that's really easy to draw in, in digitally. Perfectly round circles. That's okay. Lima's eyes are a bit all over the place. Plus, they're smoking, so uh, they definitely not. Their eyes probably aren't all focused in the right direction. It's like this ear fo isn't focused in the right location. So let's get rid of this. <laughs> yeah, and I normally draw in my comic. It's um, the the let's get rid of this is an incredibly painstaking thing because I still um, I still do stuff just on a bit of paper and scan that in and then fix up anything that I have uh, made a mistake with. So I don't know. Would he be into it? Maybe maybe he's into it. Maybe I'll maybe he's more like. Mm. That line's too thin. That's fine. Really a real big one. Bigger is better. If I've learned anything from uh, colliding with a chance of meatballs, because that was definitely something that one of the good guys said. So we've got a lemur here with their... Oh, no, they don't have collars like that. It's been too long. They have collars like this. And we've got... Little lemur hand. Oh, we're doing this because I'm sure that's how he was informed was the way to do it. And look at that human anatomy. Yeah, even though their culture has been completely destroyed and rebuilt from scratch, I'm sure they still have the exact same clothes. This one and. Da -da 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 here is another one. Maybe this one's like, whoa. Maybe this one's got more of this sort of thing going on. It's like, whoa. And absolutely gigantic. These lemurs probably aren't long for this world. Ivy's holding it in two hands with reverence. 
Why do I keep doing these colors like that? Unacceptable. No Lima would ever do that. I think I got this color style from um, probably one of the Pokemon Nuzlocke. I think Kit started off with like a normal color ish and then it kind of just turned into that. And it was probably. I don't know why. It's like nothing like anything that looks even remotely comfortable, but it's okay. It's neck. Ablative neck armor for their completely militaristic sort of sort of situation they got going on over there. But who knows? In the rebuild, you don't know. So um, I think kind of J-Runner is probably mainly in charge of getting things sort of back to normal since she'd be one of the last original lemurs that exist. Um... Yeah, her and uh, uh, Zipster Zoom and uh, what's his name, Codswallop, the the kind of um, Attenborough esque guy. Uh, do we have? Oh wait, there's something on the back. Oh yeah, it's something like this. Some little little bits and pieces, and this sort of thing. So I'll just quickly jump across to chat and see what we got going on here. Uh, mentioned there were things you didn't like about Bay Formers, Michael Bay's Transformers, but were there? I'm curious. Obviously, last night was pretty good, especially with Unicron. Uh, what don't I like? Um, I don't like the. Uh, mm, uh, maybe, yeah, once I'm doing another sketch, I'll get onto that because I really need to get into that uh, in a big way. But yeah, when I'm doing the next picture, I'll kind of go into that without trying to be too, uh, too judgmental. Um, and it's, you know, it's been a while since I've seen them, so I might be putting kind of a bad, bad, my mind might have done the opposite of rose tinted glasses on that one. Uh, two shot fan comics featuring two main ACs. Uh, Lima Happy looks happy. <laughs> cigar they got, yeah. Actually, sleep in that cigar as a hammock later on. You know, don't have Delta Squad, but I'm not saying they do. <laughs> Yeah. So <laughs> I just edge to use judge. <laughs> um yes, definitely did some some range shooting. And that is the problem I guess when I'm doing sort of combo picks. I'm like, how big are a lemurs? How big is anything? How big's whatever? Um I think but yeah, lemurs are okay, because you can put them in the foreground and like, you know, they can be any size. They're like about three feet tall, sort of thing, so that kind of works. Uh, and, you know, they've got that, the typical anthro sort of body shape, which is justified in the law. Um, yeah. Oh, let's actually, what, we've got one up here as well. Whoop. You can't have one not upside down. So, yeah, get, um, grab, get another suggestion. Um, and, and I'll get on it. So, yeah, I'll just finish this one off real quick and then... Yeah, this is one of those ones with all those crazy tails in the back. Uh, whoop, and we've got a thing, and we've got a thing. A cigar. Just once. Uh, oops, sorry, Angel. Save it. Oh, yeah. That was just uh, my producer telling me to make sure I'm saving. Uh, oh no, behind the curtain, what's all this stuff? Uh, um, Asterine. One. And I went with zero one because I like to live on the edge. Uh, safe. Okay. Uh, yeah. How are they up there? I don't know. Leave us. It's fine. Very bad. <clears throat> Uh, oh, one of those exploding joke cigars. Yes, betrayal. All right, that's this one. This one's definitely just exploded. This is some performance art. This is some live animation right here. Let's get rid of the end of this. The smoke's still there because it hasn't been very long. But yeah, then he's got, he's got some, some of this. Yeah, sort of Looney Tunes explode style. We, we definitely don't want to hurt any of these little guys. So, wow, look at this magic.
beautiful. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's I think that's a pretty good cultural um, cultural image. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Ah, yep. Uh, how frequently am I going to post? Uh, post these uh, streams? Probably one a week. I'll probably try to do them. Maybe if this time works, I'll, I'll just keep doing doing them around about this time. Uh, the movie's so bad. Movies blocked the memories of the movies. Mm. Yeah, probably. Um, the one of this, yep. Uh, fourth film, it wasn't as bad as three and five, but it was boring. Yes, indeed. I don't, yeah, as I'm, I'll get on to a bit later, I don't know how something could simultaneously be edited so quickly with so much going on and also be the most boring thing I've ever seen. But more on that later. Uh, for the Commandos Kid, Lima just absolutely love Wars games, yeah. Uh, Shiny Mega Zero with a crown saying King of Femboys <laughs> and Kit's other gender bendy ones. Yeah, all right, I'll do that for sure. Uh, trying to spoil things for the new readers, yeah. Thank you. Uh, could still post my deal when I'm done. Um, uh, yeah, sure. Emotionally attached to the Nuzlocke survivors. Um, I'm glad. That's that's great. Um, I am too. I'm glad that sort of conveyed across because I was, oh, yeah, of course, very um, very attached. Nuzlocke is amazing for becoming attached to these little sprites on the screen. The best thing about it is, yeah, high stakes, but also... Uh, it really, it really sticks with you, and it really makes it mean a lot more. At, to the point where, for the longest time, I just couldn't even play a Pokemon game without Nuzlocking it. Uh, thinking Sobek tries explaining a story where Soups and mutants from a parallel Earth help them save the multiverse. Um, yeah, all right. Uh, I'll tell you if you like. Yeah, sure. I will do that after I do the shiny Mega Zero one, and it'll definitely be obviously shiny because it's black and white. So we're going to get rid of this one, turn this layer off, make a new one here. Um, so I need to real quick remind myself what shiny Loth honey looks like. So I'm just going to go into drawing mode real quick because I have immediately discovered that I can't really look at chat and draw at the same time. So um, I'm going to be doing that, but feel free to keep on putting stuff in there. I'll glance across every now and then. I did draw uh shiny zero i mean uh, mega zero once um but i have not drawn him in a while and it was only like one stupid little uh stupid little thing okay i forget how much zero doesn't actually look like anything uh but yes it, uh when i finished that uh, nuzlocke run and i looked about i had to get the the picture of the, the Elite Four uh, finale where it has them all together and I saw what a Lopani was actually supposed to look like. I was like, oh yeah, I took uh, some severe liberties with this, but that's fine. Um, oh yeah, and also, um, yeah, my memory's not super, super working great. So yeah, if, if I have missed your suggestions, please, or even if I have... Even if I said, oh, yeah, awesome, and but then I didn't do it. Um, yeah, just, just just put it in again uh, in a bit. So, yeah, we'll go with this. So let's see, zero. That's white. Yeah, shiny. Shiny love honeys. White, probably. I don't know. There's no way to know. Let's go. He's, uh, yeah, judging, judging by shiny logic, uh, he's probably either pink or green uh, that's usually uh, how it is um, let's see he's gonna I think he's like I think he's like embraced it now I think he's good to go um, I think when he was first drawn like that he certainly did not oh his eyes like that it's been a long dang time that's probably close enough okay so I'm gonna keep his like sort of gimpy digimon stuff going because he would still definitely have that um uh we're in a crown that's right king of femboys other gender vindimons uh i think that was all of my male digimon probably i don't know why that happened but um yeah we'll just catch pokemon that would just 
yeah, I don't know. Um, that's just how it kind of worked out. I, I, yeah, definitely none of the main players had any kind of masculinity to them at all, at all. So yeah, um, the crown. A lot plenty with a crown. Uh, where in the world is that going to go? Because Lopunny's kind of, they kind of have this kind of thing going on. So this, yeah, I don't, I think not. Oh, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, I think. So we're going to get, uh, we're going to get him kind of sorted out first of all. Actually, before I start doing too much ears, do Nega Lopunny's even do that? Probably. Oh yeah, they got this kind of business. Oh, it's all one big, it's all one big Navi, isn't it? Perpetual, hey, listen, that's probably why. Could he get? To the, yeah, I think he could. He access the internet? Yeah, because he was a Digimon, he could. So, turns out that's just because he had a Navi on his head the whole time. And then, yeah, they're so round. <laughs> He's so not round. Okay, yeah, and he has kind of this physique, and I think he's gonna be like, yeah, he's gonna be a bit, a little bit sassy. Oh man, what is going on with Megalopony arms? They. Uh, uh, <laughs> like this, and whoop, yeah, okay, whatever, it's fine. Um, now, Transformers, Michael Bay, 07 to 20 XXX, or whenever they, whatever. Um, yeah, so as I said, I watched the first one, I thought it was really good, um and i was like sort of really really blindsided really blown away by it um just the, the especially just i think the opening scene was what really what really got me uh the, the scene with blackout at the base and he comes in as a helicopter and no one knows what's going on and like the the transformation with the with the proper uh kind of sound effects it um yeah it was just incredible and that was like exactly what i wanted from from a sort of like a, a live action Transformers film. It, uh, yeah, it just had like, you know, it was using the robots in disguise stuff really well. It uh, was was um, terrifying and actually, you know, showing them as this, as this actual legitimate threat. Uh, it was really good. And then all the kind of Shia LaBeouf started uh, and I don't know, like you just, they would just keep introducing one kind of problematic stereotype after another and it was just just these these jokes that maybe i don't know not not sort of my style of humor which is surprising because i have a pretty kind of lowbrow style of humor a lot of the time or all the time um but like i don't know i just couldn't really get on board with it and they just they'd bring in characters and they'd have little subplots and the subplots would get dropped nearly immediately and it was just like they had, they had some programmers in there for a bit and then they weren't there anymore. And then, you know, they were at a car lot and some guy was like saying he was going to bash his mum's head in with a brick or something. And I don't know. And then then the, all these million, million year old robots who've come to earth with, you know, four million years of experience bumbling around like idiots out in the street. Uh, I don't know. And uh, his par uh, Sam's parents and just everything about it. I've wa I um I watched it again in the cinema when it came out with a with a more discerning friend and I and it sort of ended and I was like, what do you think? And they were like, <laughs> I can't remember exactly what they said, but it wasn't it wasn't particularly positive. And uh, they sort of likened it to um oh you know how we uh, had like a conversation and it kept on jumping between bits and pieces every like three seconds. It was kind of like watching like a movie length version of that. I'm like, oh yeah, it kind of was. And then when we watched the second one, which was kind of just, all I really remember from that is um, uh, uh, just, 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 you know, the, the usual things. Devastated with, with balls. Um, a human boat can just destroy a transformer. It's just, I don't know, the whole fallen stuff just made no sense. 
and it just was just a bunch of inc- you know incredibly quick edits and they got really lazy with the with the transformations they never barely even transformed at all and it um it just it just kind of just got worse from there oh actually the third one i didn't hate as much but yeah it was just kind of nothing it's just just boring and just just kind of not what i wanted it just yeah really really quick edits really pointless gratuitous scenes that made their mischaracterized characters just seem like monsters and just i don't know if it was its own kind of thing like giant robot explosion girls on motorbikes i don't know whatever you would call it i i'd probably i don't know i wouldn't like it but it wouldn't be just to just to use transformers for that i don't know and then i watched the fourth one and it kind of oh, i don't like this at all it kind of um got uh, yeah i don't know if, what happened yeah there uh, was one of the dinobots in it it um yeah it was just 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 a whole bunch of nothing and like you know cameos think kelsey grandma was in that one he's he's great sort of you know, like phoning it in and his dinobots are in there for like one second at the end and then yeah like i would like after every one of them after the second one i'm like never again and yet every time again we would go and watch it and then the people our friends who are already kind of not on board anymore they'd like what did you expect when we came out of it going like mm. uh yeah so eventually by the fifth one we learned our lesson but then i watched bumblebee and that was that was really good uh it was pretty good i don't say really really good but um yeah it was fun i liked that a lot and uh so if rise of the beast kind of more follows that that timeline and that that sort of thing i think will be um yeah i get back on board but until that um uh but oh yeah that's right we've got some got some ripped leggings they oh man they're just legs they just do this they really don't leave much to the imagination at all i made him a bit furry actually he's not that fuzzy he's pretty smooth okay so we've got some stylish tears it appears to be a leotard but actually is not anything um and it's gone way all the way down i think i'll leave it about here and then okay so what have we got we've got uh whoop probably the original uh um, what'd he do the little body the little the little this and whoop doing his little pedal dance but yeah look at looking at the at the trailers of the new film pretty good but then again i'm pretty picky with um pretty picky with uh with my stuff and you know the the original 1986 transformers film is probably still unironically my favorite film and if there was something that i i'm gonna watch just if there's nothing else to watch or whatever i'm probably just gonna put that on again it's uh even though i don't have to because i could just play it in my head and i could probably just got scene by scene all right what else we got felony who yeah started off as the i guess the most fanboyest of them is that how he do yeah i think so oh he's got it and then he got usurped eventually by uh apollo and ultra six <clears throat> so he's in here he's got his little neck thing yeah i feel like this is like it's gonna be like a little uh movie poster style so there's gonna be fading out out there apollo looks like this and he's got this sort of thing going on no Oop. this 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 and he's gonna be uh being his little flamboyant self he's back to the camera because he is doing his own thing back there <clears throat> do you have a nose i don't know probably not actually one good thing about the uh that i don't know if you've seen it i put it on patreon the um <clears throat> the big uh image that i had of like as many of my characters as i can remember as possible it's pretty good because i hadn't drawn a lot of those in like absolute years so that's been good uh in terms of right now remembering the basics of what these guys look like uh whoop. 
God. I think it's just actually, I, that, I, that probably wouldn't have even mattered. I think it's like muscle memory at this point. If you've done a, like a comic, especially a really, really long one, <laughs> uh, you would know that, um, yeah, you sort of get, get used to drawing, drawing a character, so it just becomes kind of second nature. Oh, yeah. Perry, Perry. Oh, man. Uh, oh, no, yes, of course. He is the original. Um, I always sort of forget about him because he didn't really... I always forget that he didn't actually get a voice until, like, the last page of the comic or something crazy. Like, he... Um, <clears throat> he uh, yeah, he's silent for quite a lot of it, but he, he is very important. He was my first big... First big, oh my god, he's dead. Because in the first run, there wasn't that many deaths. It was kind of very stupid. Or, like, the Pokemon weren't that kind of well-defined uh, in terms of their character as uh, in the, um, compared to how it became later on. Uh, so, yeah, he, he was one of the ones that was. But, yeah, if I think back to that original run, there was, like, Ashes, Perry Perry, and... The other one's like, oh, yeah, there's probably some others. I don't know. It doesn't matter. They didn't really have much characters. But, yeah, he was definitely the first of these kind of fanboy slots. All right. He's there behind the pedal dance. Um, who am I forgetting? Ion's not really. He's a, he's a, he's a macho man uh, to the extent that I ever have those. Uh, oh, wait. Mega honey has got a little crop top forgot let's just really bring that right up you can see some definition here that kind of goes pretty good with this collar actually if i knew how to connect lines together i would use the fill tool for this but ain't nobody got time for that i will instead spend a huge amount of time doing this yeah um Cool. Uh, I think. Nope, nope, no, no. Does this happen? Oh, God. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, oh, he has. Wait, he doesn't have that. He's got like this. Yeah, that'll do. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, so let's just go back to here and see what's going on. Um, yeah, I'll probably add a, a couple of. Go have a little, little more in here. Um, whoop, whoop, whoop. sorry, as I get back through the chat real quick, um, ooh, lots has happened, whoop, <laughs> uh, 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 da, 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 da. um, Yeah, so I'll do I'll do um yeah Omega's one now the Sobek explaining oh yeah Sips and Unions Parallel Earth uh save the multiverse uh, let me just see Rat one of your female characters dress up as Samus uh yeah you picked the character yep uh, I'm just gonna real quick write some of these down because I am no good at remembering stuff it turns out. So, Samus, armor spelled A-R-M-O-R, -R, as the Lord intended, and we've got the Sobek one, <coughs> uh, I don't know like anything, Pokemon Challenges on YouTube, uh, yeah, so, uh, they transformers were great when no one was talking. Yeah, unfortunately that was I'd say as long as no one was talking or humping legs. Yes, that was probably probably bearable. Uh American humor, okay. Um yeah, as an Australian, like we like to think that because we're this weird like Venn diagram cross section of kind of America and England that we sort of get both, but I feel like we just get neither. Sometimes I don't know. We've got our own weird thing going on. Australian humor's uh, an acquired taste. I feel like it's 
So a lot of the times, I don't know, I'll say stuff or in the nuzzle, people are like, what is this? I'm like, oh yeah, you kind of, that's, that's a little local stuff. Uh, I was surprised though in a Nuzlocke when I made Silver um, into uh, the lead character of Sil Silverchair, a band I assume was everywhere in the 90s, but turns out mainly just in Australia. So that kind of felt a little bit flat, but that's okay. Kit Fox's opinion of the Dinobots. Oh, I love the Dinobots. Good old Greg Berger doing a fantastic voice as Grimlock. Uh, yeah, they're great. Um, you yeah, know, the original. That is in the in G one in the new ones. I don't know. The designs are okay. I I had I had I had um figures of them all, but I ended up selling them. Um, and the figures were all colored. Like there's like a red Spinosaurus and like the purple um Triceratops, and they looked amazing. And then the movie, they were just. I mean, in the in the original G one show, they're gray, but they're also gray and they're also gold and they're also have goofy eyes. And in I don't know. In the movie, it's the same with all the designs. They're just bland almost rock-like looking dirty metal that all kind of looks the same. I don't know. Um, Sobek in Crocodile Hunter clothes, uh, which she wore in the adventure she mentions. Uh, when did that happen? Are we, are we talking about the same Sobek, the one who is in Industrial Revelations? That's the one I was thinking of. Um uh let me saw the last one on tv and the only noteworthy transformer that i liked that was only shown maybe one or two scenes was the oh warpath <laughs> why i won't even do it yeah warpath was really good <laughs> it was really great um four guys crown yes yes fellow kids i know exactly what you're talking about um a lot of potholes, Bumblebee serving World War II. Yeah, they kind of retconned a lot of stuff there. Um, Bumblebee fighting Nazis was cool. Yeah, anyone fighting Nazis is pretty cool. They got them legs. Yeah. Uh, lithium's got good taste. Let me leave it at that. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, not so much Zero. He t um... <laughs> Never mind. Uh, it was cool, don't get me wrong, but when you look at it chronologically, why would that scene with Sector 7 exist? Because clearly they know there is, yeah, I don't even bother trying to keep track of the chronological plot order of anything in there. And then the Transformers in the Medieval Times is cool too. Uh, yeah, they didn't, oh, I didn't watch that one, so never mind. I thought I had watched it and blanked it out, so I don't even know. But that probably would be good. Uh, they did that in the original series, uh, Madman's Paradise, where they go back um they find an ancient bit of cybertron uh which was built when cybertron was controlled by the quintessons about 80 million years ago or something and they they find a secret place that they would send criminals into other dimensions and one of those other dimensions was like a like a medieval sort of camelot magical um uh yeah world and that was really cool they went and back and did that so i like that a lot so I'm kind of glad I didn't watch Transformers 5 because it would probably be not as good as that. But it was Bruce Bumblebee. Yeah, I know. But I don't think, I think he was just had his name on that. I don't know how much he actually did. Uh, no shame in love in terrible media as long as we're honest about it. Oh, yeah. I love my fair share of terrible media. Uh, probably most of it, actually. Um, yep. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's been a while since I've drawn steel. Uh, yeah. Okay, let me just note that down. Femboy heavy on this one. So, Subic does two randos. Uh, wait for my turn. Yep. Uh, uh, whoop. Um, so, that Nuzlocke was a Mega Ruby Sapphire. Uh, it was just regular. Um, regular Sapphire. Uh, that was a good one with Sorry Sam Deck. Yeah. Um, Cadmus spelled backwards, which has implications. I didn't like it at first because of coming off the Unicorn trilogy. Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah, I was a little, um, I was a couple of steps behind that. So I actually couldn't stand the uh, Unicron trilogy because of its 3D bots. Oh, no, it was okay. That was when I took a bit of a break from Transformers. And I didn't watch Transformers animated because I just, I couldn't get into the style at first. Later on, I did come back to it and I didn't really enjoy it. And then Prime was incredible, so that's all good. Um, uh, Woof, you're the rabbit. Go into Woof, you're the rabbit style.
Mm -hmm. Right over there. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Timbo. All right. Very much. Um, gonna have to get everything. <laughs> yeah. It it is. Yeah. The the whole name thing is a bit of a bit of a conundrum. So my name is Matt Cleaver, which is not how most people know me. Uh, let's see. Hey, like your folks' fans? Yeah, they're awesome. They're all very, very awesome. Um, sorry for that audio nightmare. I was just audibly thinking. With soups, mutants, cyborgs, and alien homo sapiens, to save the multiverse from three prehistoric Atlanteans and the most bizarre villains you can ever think of under one week two. Um, is that is that the the text? Oh yes, it is. I can see the top of it here. Um, okay, All right. Favorite. Let me just copy that so I don't lose it. I wonder. This one might be a bit much. We'll see how it goes. I'll just chuck that into a Word document so I can get to it. Uh, why are you being slow? It's not like I'm streaming or anything. Oh, here we go. All right. Uh, cool. Wait even to catch up with the chat. Florida man in a yellow suit is reading that he's a question for like uh oh yes, that's that's the rest of the explanation. Um I did like how they put human villains in the third and fourth movies. Yeah, that was cool. Um yeah, very, very high profile humans at that. Du -du 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 -du. <laughs> okay. Um have I I've never visited the US, never been to an Outback restaurant. Um, oh, I'll, I'll answer that when I'm drawing. <clears throat> Should answer, no one know. But um, yeah, I'll have a bit of more on that. Um, all right. So, uh, so Omega, yes, it is the Sobek from my comic. I'm going to assume yes. Um, just a, until I get a... I just until I get a, a uh, absolute confirmation on that, because I don't want to be like... Ugh gatekeeping the name Sobek and assuming it was mine. Um, so I'm just going to draw Steel real quick because I haven't drawn him for a while. So let's turn off this. Let's... It is a bit, so I'm just imagining watching this back as a video, just seeing just blank, just scrolling through, and then suddenly something happens in five minutes. I'll sort that out. That's one of the hiccups. This is this is a bad one. This isn't anything anyway. So as I mentioned up top, this is, yeah, this isn't real yet. Let's go File, Save. Because these incredibly good pictures need to be preserved. So steel. I've been drawing everyone facing this way. So as a good person, I should immediately ruin this direction. Okay. He he probably has gone through like the most sort of like iterations of any of my characters, but that's okay because he's a robot. Um for anyone who doesn't know, Steel is, yeah, he's, a, he's sort of a, a pull from a very old kind of, nope, old comic universe of mine. Uh, yeah, cross, ugh, God, what am I doing? Uh, crossovers, uh, which kind of started out when I was in primary school. Um, and if you, you know, you're all on Patreon, so you would have seen some of them sort of be coming in slowly, creeping up slowly, as Taxi Ride said. Um, I'm slowly uploading the uh, the crossovers comics, um, which is sort of pre DA stuff that I did a long, long, long time ago. And the reason why I'm uploading them in re in reverse order is because the main character uh, Raid, he um, he's a time traveler and he is living his life backwards, but he's a super genius, so he can like do it, and no one really noticed the difference. So he's actually going through the comics backwards. Uh, so sort of seeing it from his perspective. Um, so yeah, uh, as it goes further back, um, so he starts off quite old and then he gets sort of younger as he goes through it. And he's also the one who is in Second Coming who's running um, Time Corp. So he's like the dog with the, the really floppy 
floppy hair. He's kind of like my first first OC sort of thing. But yeah, steals from that that universe where they kind of like go through different um, <clears throat> different stories. Um, in universe, it's like um, he has a he has a time machine, but what he's actually doing is um, uh, traveling to different universes that are set in different times. So he's not actually time traveling. Uh, but yeah, it's a very sort of complicated. So I started this off in primary school. The first one was, um, it was like just a weird mix of stuff. It was all sorts of things. Uh, yeah, the first one, yeah, it'll be up at some point. I think I'm up to crossovers four, uh, where um, Raid and Crimson, who will eventually become uh, Kid Fox, my persona, although that was his first appearance and the one that kind of went up a while ago, um, uh, they have to stop uh, history's being sort of messed up as as it usually is, um, because for some reason whatever whatever happened, um, the Middle Ages never happened. So um, Europe became incredibly advanced, like sort of six hundred years more advanced than they should be, and uh, because of that, when they went to invade um, Middle America, uh, uh, the Spanish. Uh, conquistadors they're like incredibly high tech and they had like sort of technology that sort of you know could absorb energy and and all this sort of thing um and so they go in there to sort of try to find out what happened and to do that they go into lots of other other worlds um raid has sort of ulterior motives for that as as is explained in the comic um yeah to try to sort of figure out what's going on and they go into like the animals of farthingwood and um uh, Oliver and company and kind of all this stuff. Um, and, uh, yeah, in the, in the next, in the next one, by which I mean the one before that, uh, they go into Balto and Sonic and, and, and all sorts of whatever I kind of wanted at the time. And these are all kind of things, um, that I was doing in, uh, yeah, in like it's sort of late primary school, which is elementary school for everyone out there who, uses different words for these things. Um, yeah, sort of started off about then. The Yeah, so Steel uh, came into it at some point. Uh, he was sort of a late-ish edition. He sort of came in um, after the fifth one, I think. I think I think the fifth one's up, up on there, but I don't think he is in any of those. Uh, no, yeah, he, uh, if he's not in any of those, he's definitely in... Um, the next one. Yeah, so he's like a robot who, um, uh, oh, it's sort of explained in, um, in, another, in another comic. He was built by a fan of the in-universe version of Twilight uh, who wanted to make a vampire. So what they did was they combined like a military grade body uh, with a um, gentleman caller CPU and sort of trained it to... Um, yeah, well, sort of, sort of made it made it uh, really strong, and it also was solar powered. So if it was in direct sunlight and it wasn't incredibly active, it would just overheat, uh, giving that little vampire effect. But eventually, kind of um, through various time travel shenanigans, um, he gained enough sentience or the ability to replicate sentience enough um, that he sort of is indistinguishable at this point from from a, from a real life human boy. Uh, wolf boy but yeah he uh he's had a lot of iterations in the past he started off looking absolutely ridiculous like uh let's i'll do that i'll do the, the life cycle of steel uh, he started off looking like uh okay so if you've, if you've been back into my gallery like a a million years everyone had gigantic eyes um and very small chins and actually i'm, I'm putting up Stolen Generation at the moment, problematic title. After I redo that at some point, uh, he, um, yeah, yeah uh, every all the characters had really small chins, really small noses, uh, and sort of a lot of mullets. So he definitely had one of those, and he had this kind of thing, the sort of the the nervous color pattern, which sort of went around like that. Whereas now it does this, uh, and he had sort of this hair. And it just, this big old mullet that sort of went down like this. And then um, a little bit after that, so, so yeah, if you go sort of spelunking down into the depths of, of my gallery, you'll probably see this. 
version of him, uh, version one. But yeah, um, in lore, it's, it's it's just you know he has different bodies, different stuff he can go into. He just transplants his head into it. Um, shortly after that, he um, still with like the incredibly sort of thin noses and stuff and big eyes. He got this sort of thing happening, and the incredibly long hair. And yeah, back in this day, these day and age, he was uh, like a. Uh, uh, this is like pre um, pre digital art, so he would be uh, sort of a, a faded out blue and a disgusting tan because those were sort of the the colors I had to work with with my um, uh, watercolor paints that I would use. Yeah, he sort of became this real Sephiroth sort of vibe. You can kind of tell the points at which his redesigns were being done. And then, yeah, he sort of eventually got sort of this business, um, and and then he sort of his, his his back hair sort of became a lot shorter and sort of became around like that. He has had even shorter hair than that, um, but yeah. So it, mo most recently, he uh, oh, actually I've got a picture with him in it coming up. I just haven't had the time to kind of finish it. Uh, but yeah, he. Uh, his hair got quite sort of short um, and sort of did the, he always has this because he has to, but yeah, sort of this sort of thing. So I'm to sort of modernize it just a little bit. But uh, yeah, it sort of eventually went back to, back to this, back to the main, the main thing with the big, big bangs and just, no, this. Yeah, sort of goes up and sort of folds down a bit more. Anyway, that's that. It's fully enough about him. But yeah, he, um, eventually I'm going to do another crossovers one in the, in the vein of um, second coming and two steps forward, uh, where he and Daniel, who's another character in that universe, are kind of doing stuff, where he, uh, he Daniel gets sort of, while the other two are off doing that time traveling stuff, Daniel gets the job of uh, making like a, an intro video to, to Time Corp, uh, which is where they work. And he, he's basically just using steel to get information at, at the start on some of the other characters, but eventually um, he sort of seizes him as his actual person, whereas before he didn't through various things that happened. Um, yeah, another little, little growth, kind of like Second uh, Two Steps Forward was, where it's like a pretty simple story, a chance to try some stuff uh, visually that I haven't really done before and like explore some characters in a fairly simple kind of, um, kind of context. Oh yeah, and his markings on his body go like whoop, and no, like that. Yeah. Okay. Now I think I need to go back to chat real quick and have a look at where we're going. Uh, oh yes, here we go. Um, Bloom and onion is good. Um. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I don't. I. I have no idea what that is. Um. But yeah, I'll look into it. Um, oh yes, that's right. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do so back doing the explanation. Now oh, that's going to really plumb the depths of memory. Okay. So let's turn this one off, get a new one in, do a little old save. Yeah. Um, so no, I've not been to the U S I really, I do really want to go, uh, especially since, um, I don't know, like since I've been uh, mentioning Marvel Crisis, Crisis Protocol a lot, but since I've been getting into that, um, just like New York in particular has just sort of become like really interesting to me. Uh, I don't know, like, and I, I yeah, I recently rewatched Oliver and Company, which is kind of like, I don't know, but it, it's my kind of touchstone as like the most 80s New York thing that, <laughs> that could exist, like just real grimy and just, I don't know. Like I love it. I love I love the whole aesthetic. I love the the way the little people are portrayed. So yeah, I really want to go to the U.S. I really want to go there. I really um, we're actually um, going to uh, Canada uh, eventually, um, and we're probably going to be in U.S. for a for a little minute uh, while we go to Niagara Falls. Uh, but yeah, I definitely want to get to the U.S. and go and have a look around. And see, what the heck am I doing? <laughs> I went into talking mode and I started doing all sorts of ungodly, what am I drawing? Um, uh, yeah, so I definitely want to get to the US. I want to see all the different places. 
I want to go to, yeah, all the places I kind of heard about, all the places that all like the streamers and stuff uh, that, I, that I listen to, I live in. I want to go to uh, Milwaukee, even though there's kind of, I heard not a huge amount of stuff there, but we'll see. Uh, and yeah, just, just, just get right across the whole dang thing and like see it all. So um, yeah, and I really want to go, go there. Uh, the closest I've been to an Outback Steakhouse wasn't actually in Japan. It wasn't actually in America. It was in Japan. We were there a couple of times um, because my sister was working over there in schools teaching English. So we went over there to see her a few times. And while we were there, we did see the Outback Steakhouse, um, and I was I was I was very tempted, but the, we were so spoiled for choice. Yeah, I kind of just wanted to see what what was going on because um, we have, I guess, steakhouses, and I assume it's probably similar to to that but yeah it'd be cool to kind of see see what's see um see the difference or what the take what the take is on, on our sort of thing i mean mainly we just like have a big steak uh or like a real big steak and just put it on a plate and cook it like two percent less than it probably should be cooked and then have some like curly fries or whatever next to it well actually come to think of it i feel like the thing is whenever we go to a steakhouse in he, around here, I kind of assume it's actually more of an American sort of thing, which is kind of a, I feel like it's this weird, like, double thing, like, when you're supposed to be in two places at once, so you say, oh, I, oh, I'm at this wedding, oh, but I've really got to go to my, my, my mate's other wedding uh, that's happening at the same time, so I'll put on, on a moustache and, and go over there, and then I'll say, oh, I've got to, got to run to the, run to the bathroom and, oh, and then I'll go over there and do a speech and then I'll come back. It's like, oh, I've, I've left the, the oven in the kettle and I've got to go fix that. I feel like it's that sort of thing where like steakhouses don't actually exist. It's just every country thinks that it's what they eat in the other country. Cause yeah, besides the one, we have one steakhouse called, um, Hogs Breath Cafe, uh, which, yeah, I sort of, I, I get big sort of like Texas vibes from it. So like, I don't know. Uh, Outback Steakhouse, not really a thing. We we mainly just have like, um, yeah, so ignore the first 90% of whatever I said. Uh, we don't really have them. So it's, yeah, I think it's like an invented thing. Just like, as I'm sure, as I'm sure you know, um, throwing a shrimp on the barbie is wrong in, in many ways. One, we don't call them shrimps. We call them prawns. Second, uh, you, yeah, I mean, you would never say that. Um, and uh, you, yeah, if you're putting prawns on, on a barbecue, uh, you yeah you would probably do that. You probably would never say that though. Um, the same as like uh, we don't tend to say good day or crikey or whatever. Insert thing here, drongo. Um, our older generation sort of will. That's kind of like a cultural cultural touchstone between me uh, a, a young hip millennial and like the older generations like uh like like your boomers or your, your baby your, your war babies they they tend to be more the ones that will say that sort of thing so when i'm talking to an older person i probably will uh use more of that language to chameleon myself into their way of talking but yeah tragically um it's kind of like a dying art our our, our beautiful <laughs> drunk uh language um, so yeah, um, yeah, uh, steakhouse, not so much, throwing shrimp on the barbie, not so much, saying all those things, not so much, uh, and yeah, so that's right, unlike most of my characters, uh, she's got a bit of this going on, I don't know how to draw this, because um, in our shadow it's not really a thing. And, oh yeah, she's sort of like a, where do they even live? I think they're in, oh, they're in England, yeah. She's, I always imagined her as sort of like a Southern Belle sort of type of, type of character. Uh, <clears throat> all right, so, um, yeah, Murak, if you just, uh, whoop, I mean, Omega, if you just tell me uh again just real quick oh crocodile hunter get up sorry what was i doing 
fairly be the same thing but with a with a pocket actually yeah that's that's a crocodile hunter get up and and short rolled up sleeves no long rolled up sleeves. we shouldn't roll up short sleeves what am i talking about yeah um yeah and then and then this and i'm gonna give her a little a, a little, little, little hat pulling double duty as being a crocodile hunter and a cow person sort of the same thing i guess um yeah if you could just tell me who again it was that uh she's talking to um then i will put that text in there and you'll be able to see what oh no you've seen my handwriting you've watched it and seen the muzzle probably um yeah so i'll wait until that catches up yeah very practical pockets um absolutely definitely not just stitched on to give the illusion of pockets absolutely not she has colored pupils no that's right all the gods have this yeah because that was kind of the first comic where i did proper black uh black shading like before that it was just cross hatched so i thought oh i'm going mad with my new abilities i'm gonna just do everything shaded completely in black as possible um yeah so this other person if not i'll just i'll just start drawing in like a little i'll just start drawing the writing in there whoop bring this up okay whoops let's make that a little smaller i don't know if i'm gonna fit the whole thing in here but we'll see Okay, I'll, I'm, I'm only being quiet for everyone else's benefit because I know you can't read and talk at the same time. It's impossible, and certainly not just because I can't do that. Whoop. Tangent. Notice my H's look like backwards ends. I got in a lot of trouble at school for this. Uh, now, how are we going to get. Okay, let's get this hand in here. Uh, joint forces with soups, mutants. Cyborgs. 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 Yeah, there's new cyborgs really taking over the taking over the city. Cyborgs. And alien homo sapiens. Has he done it? Can he do it? Nope. Homo sapiens. <clears throat> to save the multiverse from three prehistoric. And I'm just going to have that kind of doing this because we need the other person in there. Oh, she's incredibly tall. So the other person can come down here. Two randos. Okay, I can I can draw randos. We've got, we've got. Uh, no, well, this is we've got. Here's a cape. So, let's see if you know who this is. He's 
got a fetching uh, nice uh, dull dullish blue cape with gold trim and some hair and of course this is rando calrissian and we have another rando uh ah oh, yes And this is, of course, Rando McDonald. Why didn't I do digital inking ages ago? This is actually not too bad. Yeah, that's given that, that real Industrial Revelations look. Oh, I guess it has buttons. Yeah, that's, that's something. And she's yeah, she's like eight feet tall or something. If you haven't seen Industrial Revelations with the comic, she's like a crocodile. Uh, crocodile? Yeah, she's a crocodile. Cool. Uh, okay, I'm just uh, I'm checking over and chat again here. I did watch a video where a bunch of Australians tried American junk foods and some of them couldn't even make it past the first bite. I think one of those was jerky or spicy Doritos. Whenever I think of jerky, I think of the, the Futurama episode where um, Fry eats the, the 27 million year old mummy that Farnsworth have, has in his, uh, in his desk. So I assume that's what jerky tastes like. I don't know. Spicy Doritos. I mean, yeah, we're pretty... Uh, we're pretty baby when it comes to um, junk food. We just have your very, your basic, your basic sort of things. We've got Pringles. We have, well, we have a lot of things. I watched, um, cause I watched Game Grumps a lot. I watched their like, um, you know, tier list of like candy, candy bars, as I believe you call them. Uh, and I only knew like about 10% of them. So we, we, we're sort of very sheltered. We've, we've got our own things. You might've heard of Tim Tams. You might've heard of, that's about it. But we've got others. I'll think of them later. Yeah. Um, Bill just looks at American foods and runs for the hills screaming in terror. Yeah, I don't know. I hear, I hear England probably gives you a pretty good run, run for your money. I think they have uh, a lot of deep fried stuff. We do too. We, we can't we can't say we don't. Yeah, but I think it's all we're all we're all the same thing at this point. Um, uh, I think. The biggest thing Kit Fox would not like about Outback Steakhouse is when people ask if you can cook a blooming onion. He just stares at them. <laughs> yeah. In my head, um, <laughs> I don't, in my head, a blooming onion, I don't know what. It's like an, an onion that's a flower or it's the onion, the satirical news show, uh, the American version of what we have, which was which was called uh, Chaser Nonstock news and network cnn and n um so yeah i don't know it, my mind just draws a blank so my eyes would probably also draw a blank if someone talked to me about a blooming onion but yeah I'll, I'll learn at some point maybe maybe it'll be a fun thing to never learn that that sounds that sounds cool um industrial revelations probably my favorite series but ios and nuzlocke's come really close um yeah i i really enjoyed um doing industrial revelations it was kind of just like I don't know. I, I kind of think it was just fun. That was like joining dots, the the comic. It was like, here's a character. And, oh, you might not have known this about them. They've forgotten their whole part and was slowly revealed that they were actually all these stuff. Um, yeah, so I really enjoyed that as well. I really liked doing the, um, the steampunky sort of mechs. But even then, that wasn't quite long enough ago for me to not look back on it now and, like, cringe and in, in distaste and horror at some of the things i put in there so yeah i don't know I'm, i might ugh, i don't know i've just been doing a, a wholesome comic for so long looking back to when i had some non-wholesome stuff it's like i oh i did this this was me that did this so yeah but yeah i'm glad i'm glad you like it stereotypes are always i'm reading this backwards so this is what time travel feels like stereotypes are always a wild ride but admittedly the best people at it's swearing I've ever met for an Australian family. Um, yeah, so when I say that, like, our traditional 
Australian dialogue is fading away. It's kind of rapidly being replaced with just swears. Uh, sadly, like working in a school, I can see it happen. Not with all of us, with some of us. We will casually drop incredibly um, offensive words at the drop of a hat, not even realizing it a lot of the time. Like I generally don't, but others do. So yeah, I'm not surprised when if that's if that's been your experience. Oh no, Kid Fox is destroying everything we Americans thought we knew about history. Yeah, get used to it. I think I'm just going to rename this uh, rename this stream. Kid Fox destroys America's opinion of Australians and Australia. Uh, yeah, I bet you probably think the whole thing's a desert, and I live in a little wooden cavern. And there's kangaroos in 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 my in my billabong, and um, every time that I'm not drawing a comic, I'm playing a didgeridoo while throwing a boomerang with some shrimps on it. And that might be true, but there's other things that aren't true. So get ready for that. I don't think so. That one, uh, JLA versus Power Rangers sounds pretty pretty cool. Um, when did the Power Rangers show? Oh wait, I think I'm way in the weeds here. I think I've stumbled upon something that started a long time ago. Um, oh, kid, uh, yes, I remember Kid Fox's comic where several pages are left out because of still being naughty. Okay, um, full disclosure, behind the curtain, I actually never drew those pages. That was just like a funny, I just wanted to see if people would like ask to see them or anything. It was just like a little little, little joke for myself. Um, but now you know, your patrons, you get the get the dis distinct honor of knowing that they never existed and never will. I just wanted to like think it was funny if people would ask me about them. Um, yeah, you love Oler and Company. Yeah, good. It's fantastic. Um, it's really good. I love uh, Billy Joel's Dodger. I love the look. I love how gritty it is and and and, uh, and steamy, and it sort of almost it sort of looks like a really dry version of a Don Bluth film. Uh, so yeah, I love it. I love I love Sykes. He's an absolute mad lad. He's riding his like his, his like whatever his car is. His big uh, I don't know. It's like some cat '80s Cadillac along some train tracks and kills himself. Like it's just incredible. Um, you don't want to know the world's opinion on the U.S. Mm, you probably already you probably get the gist of it. Um, if it's uh, uh, okay, I'm gonna go back to some some old ideas, uh, and we're gonna get onto that. So, what have we got in the pocket? Um, oh yeah, character as a samus. Okay, I can do that. I can do it. Rip Anton Yelchin. Okay, let's see samus. I know she's a series of spheres. Oh yes. One sort of um, franchise that you might think that my uh, my stuff potentially is based on, but uh, is not. No, I uh, I didn't really come across Metroid until Smash Brothers on the sixty four. Actually, wait a minute, that was like a million billion years ago. It's like nineteen ninety nine. Uh, yeah, but that was like looking at three pixels trying to be a a series of three circles. So I don't I didn't really get a good idea of what Samus was then. But certainly, like the way the armor looks is quite similar to how I do it. But you know, there's only there's only really three types of armor that exist, honestly. So a new uh, layer here. Turn this one off. So, um, who would be a Samus? Who would be the Samus? I think I'll just start doing a Samus, and then I'll uh, not zero seed. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do proper Samus. That's unacceptable. Let me. Whoop. Good enough. I feel like they they made these circles and then put all this business on it just to like hide the fact that the circle's not round. It's magic. No, it isn't. It still looks just as bad. Never mind. Uh, let's just go whoop and do some summer stuff. Now, I guess the first hurdle is um, Samus is the size of a human woman. And most of my characters aren't, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Sorry, Andrew. Next oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I just had a good producer's note that um, Samus's armor could be magical, like in D and D, where it just resizes itself to fit whoever's wearing it. So, not a problem. Or a wizard did it. One of the two. Okay. Boop. Okay. 
now? What what sort of pose are we going to put Samus in? I guess that depends on the character. Uh, who would be a Samus? What's she like a kind of she? What does what she do? She goes around and goes into levels and and uh, turns into a ball and fights some Mega Brains and some Ridleys. Mm, have I? I think I've been enough more than I can chew. I don't even know what I'm, I don't even know what I'm, what Samus is, oh, is all about. Tell me what Samus is all about. And, uh, and, and then I will, uh, I will continue. Well, okay, I'll, 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 uh, I'll do it. Um, uh, I'll do it. So tell me, like, give me a character. That's easy. Cut out the middleman. Tell me a character of mine that I can make a Samus, and then I shall do it. Uh, yep, she's got one of these. Just remembering the um, the really rare amiibos that came out with two gun arms instead of a normal arm. Uh, oh, the pose I probably can't do until I know who this is. Don't want to get too sassy for no reason. Oh, by the way, um, yeah, this might be the last one for today. Uh, I'll probably be ending it at two o'clock, um, but uh, yeah, I'll do this again next week. This has been really fun, so definitely be doing it again. Maybe at the same time. I'll see what what people reckon. If that's still something that people can still do, but maybe a different time. Yeah, I feel real bad for anyone in the uh, on the other side of the planet. But I'm in Australia. I'm on the I'm on the other side of the planet from everyone who isn't in Australia. So no matter what I do, it's going to be bad. Uh, but yeah, I just noticed as like I was looking through the times and like, oh yeah, uh, Mountain Time, Central, whatever, Eastern Standard Time. These are all lining up, and then I get to Europe, and I'm like, oh, oh no, this is, this won't do at all. So yeah, unfortunately, it's you know you can't can't be can't please anyone. Um, I I could do it at a time that would be good for them, but um, I don't know. I might I might I might change it up from week to week just to confuse everybody and uh, ruin my chances of anyone ever knowing when it is. So that's uh, from my knowledge of of TV shows and how they get cancelled. That's really good for ratings doing that. So I probably won't. Oh my god! <laughs> really? Not not the detail, the uh, the overall shape. I guess I guess the sh the uh, the power shoulders really kind of distort that old perception of things. All right, who have we got? <laughs> got Marvel and Sugar. Okay. <laughs> uh, you mean Sugar from from SG? Who is also my wife's character? Yeah, probably. Uh, sure. I will do. I will do them both. So I'll do Marvel first. That, that makes sense. She's kind of getting a bit a bit sassy. Um, real, real, real. Uh, hair bang heavy stream hair wise. Um, I'm probably gonna change his body shape a little bit. That's fine. Whoop. Wondering if it does help to make the noise when you're doing the shape. That's why it came out like that. Whoop. It's going to be post. Oh! Uh, let's keep this non spoilery. That still isn't right. Yeah, I might redo this whole body actually. Do not like it. I don't know if that's very much, actually. That's better. Bit 
bigger. This hair that looks completely different from every angle. Oh yeah, if anyone's got like a, a kind of a long formish question that I could rant about for a for a few minutes, that would be also good. Um, um every Monday, yeah, yeah, probably. I, yeah, it's fun. I mean, I'm I'm the reason I can I've been doing so much stuff lately is because I'm on school holidays. So this is more like what it would be if I wasn't a teacher. Uh, but when I get back to work, I won't have as much time. So things are going to get a bit more sparse. But certainly until then, uh, certainly until I go back in like February, it uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely do them once a week. I think that would be pretty cool. Uh, except for when I'm going away to, I mean, this is Australia. So obviously there's a beach outside everyone's house but we're going to a particular beach this time which is a bit far away for a holiday so uh yeah we won't be uh won't be here when that happens that's going to be like the 21st of january yeah um get rid of it get rid of whoops not that way get rid of all of it <clears throat> uh am i going to make any major changes in the sg Reboot. Good question. Good long question that I can answer for eight minutes. Yes. Okay. So am I? Ah, uh, yeah. Yes. Lots of changes. Um, so yeah, uh, I put up a poll a while ago about like um, the stuff I'm going to be doing next. So probably after this, um, this one finishes, I'm going to be doing like um, a nuz uh, another Nuzlocke, and then after that, yeah, I might do like an SG reboot um let's zoom out a little bit oh, I zoomed in this entire time uh yeah i'm gonna do an sd reboot probably um and yeah uh i did i drew i did that in a perfect storm of the world was not very mm, open to being chill about not being offensive so uh, yeah, it's 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 it'd be it's it's like problematic in a lot of ways. Like even its themes, the portrayal of a lot of stuff, kind of like the names I use, the name of the comic itself, and just is really insensitive. So I'm gonna make like massive changes. So it's gonna be um, yeah, it, the the main story is gonna be the same, but probably reference to you know, in case you didn't know, uh, Stolen Generation was the uh, generation of Aboriginal children who were taken. To live in British families when they came to Australia to, because they liked it and thought it would, they fancied it as a prison for all their ne'er do wells, and uh, yeah, they took a whole generation of kids away, and they did not like it one bit, and it was not a good time for them, and a lot of them didn't didn't even survive the process. So yeah, uh, I think even before I started that comic, um, it was gonna. I didn't exactly know what the comic was gonna be exactly leading towards um so i sort of had something different in mind but then when it finished it was so it turns out to be not that focused on that sort of thing after all i thought it's like yeah i'm gonna really really smart and cool and make this all like an analogy for for all that happening using australian animals instead of people so then i'm completely no 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 one will care but i feel like people still would if i did that again the same so i'm gonna turn probably turn that down it's still gonna be like you know, um, probably the marsupials versus everyone else. And it's going to have all that, but there's not going to be any, like, direct references to, like, you know, the the first fleet or, or the, all that sort of stuff. Um, it's going to be more uh, more like, you know, wink, wink, kind of. You can interpret that if that way if you like. Uh, in terms of, like, designs, yeah, I've got a lot of ideas um, for how to update a lot of the, a lot of the designs. I want to go in a really... Um, uh, a really a really different direction with with the mecha stuff because originally in the comic if you've seen it they kind of just they look like like what all my mechs look like they're just um, a human shape so at the time 
uh, sort of a human shape with um, sort of very Evangelion sort of design, although a little bit more kind of boxy. And I'm going to try to steer away from that. For the Australian mechs, of course, they're based on ancient, incredibly advanced, powerful technology. It's sort of unfathomable, but still drawing on the the ideas and mindset of the pilots who built them with the knowledge they got from, spoilers, the dinosaur pod that's around. The um, They're going to be very much based on like sort of dream time art, sort of like Aboriginal art, where they're going to be mostly energy. So if you've ever seen any kind of uh, traditional sort of Australian art, how everything's sort of a... Um, it's like it's quite sort of flat made up of dots and just like a couple of colors and like wiggly lines and it's sort of like simultaneously a um, like an internal view of animals and people and an outside view and it's it's very stylistic so I'm going to like incorporate elements of that so like for example like a mech similar to how like the human mech is in In Our Shadow where it's got a lot of energy parts it's going to be it's going to be like that and then it's going to be a lot of those sort of patterns and colors and like glowy stuff everywhere because, you know, that's something new for me, putting glowy stuff everywhere. And, yeah, sort of some parts will be solid, some parts won't. The, the weapons will be, like, more unfathomable, and the designs will be, like, very, very strange looking. Um, and, yeah, uh, apart from that, probably going to tone down the the really cringy stuff. So if, <laughs> if, you're, if you're looking forward to that coming back, it probably won't. I can't even bring myself to say it, uh, some of the stuff that I put in, in that one. But um, even though a lot of SG was like really bad and clearly all written and drawn by uh, a high school kid um, with a very a limited view of the world and sort of like dealing through his own issues rather than kind of like knowing that much about other other people and how things really are, um, uh, it's it's um, yeah I'm gonna get rid of a, like try to keep a lot of that uh, sort of emotional and. Uh, interpersonal stuff there uh but just make it a little more adult i guess and not so teenage dramery and also probably not because i was looking back on it and i remember like wow a lot, a lot happened in this comic um for like how relatively short it was and that was mostly because every page had seventeen thousand words on it so i'm probably going to tone down that a little bit as well um and uh, yeah, I try to be a bit more concise in my language. A lot of it was just like streams of thought um, of like kind of people as, as you do as you would in life. But, you know, you have your whole life to think of thoughts. And in a comic, you don't really want to be doing that. It'll be, it, a lot of it's just like a person sitting at a desk with their head on it and thinking about how much they, um, you know, going to their thought process about how they feel about somebody, which is fine. I'm still kind of proud about how a lot of that is, um, but I'll try to condense it a lot uh, for when, when the new one comes out. Um, but yeah, apart from that, the characters will mostly be the same in terms of what they're about. I'm going to update some of the designs. Like um, I decided after Novus was uh, was designed that um, that he that uh, it would be that marsupials were the only ones who had really short hair. Uh, and the percentiles generally had longer hair, so I'm probably going to redesign him a bit because he just has that that really short hair, um, which doesn't really make sense because all the other non-marsupials have have got sort of fairly humany sort of hair, and that sort of distinguishes them from every, everything else. And I'll be a bit more consistent because I did make some of the marsupials with long hair, uh, and then I sort of had some little throwaway line in there about hair extensions or something uh, to retcon it in the comic but I'll, I'll just knowing what i know now i'll um yeah change it a little bit god rat gun really does not work uh for this let's see yeah so that that'll, that um that's sort of a, a ways away but i want that to you know be drawn really really good and um be uh, be something that i can be proud of whereas at the moment it's not really. Um, yeah, I feel like because uh, all the all the uh, face transition weapons have got the round bit here. In case you didn't know, oh, here's the little 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 facts. Um, 
a little bit of handle or works. So uh, these guns that the rats have, yeah, the, uh, the diffusers, uh, what they do is they um, they accelerate um, a particle in this the, in this bit in a in a gravity field in a vacuum up to kind of like near light speed, and then it ejects out the front, and then um, the the stream is is such in such a plasmatic state that kind of whatever it touches will just be instantly liquefied no matter, like no matter what it is and of course they the gravity technology um sort of gets around a lot of limitations that we have at the moment it uh yeah it sort of sort of sort of works out um i never really figured out how the blades oh it sort of explains how the blades work a little bit it's like um they just it's kind of like how detergent can just break the molecules between like fat and stuff and that's how it sort of breaks stuff down kind of does that for all matter but doesn't really explain how it does that or anything like that. But yes, that's why they always have these circles. That's like the acceleration um, pod. And yeah, this big bit at the front still just like contain the incredible heat. And in the latest, dang it, keep going, ah, oh, can I spoil? No, probably not. Um, no, I won't say anything. But yeah, uh, something happens in the, in the later pages that are on Patreon. Um... What's in these? Oh my god, I'm looking at this now, and this is like, I've never really looked at Samus properly. This is so much like what I do. Oh man. As I said though, there's, there's only really three types of armor if you think about it. This type, the other type, and the third type. And um, uh, yeah, we, we all know. If you know, you know. Go like that. Go like that. And we get some little digitigrade legs in here. And this. And one more time, and uh, we'll go with it. We haven't got we haven't got time for another take. I always wonder about rat's tails because, like, uh, you look at things, media, and people seem to just be like, uh, "We'll make it like non-existent." Like, you watch, uh, you watch a five or goes west or whatever, and it's like this. It's like, don't be, don't be ashamed of the rat's tail. I mean, do a big rat's tail, and it's like, actually, that's kind of. Uh, weird looking maybe they were right anyway i do them somewhere in the middle something like this uh which is what they completely don't actually look like but that's okay anyway i didn't quite get to the, sh the sugar one uh maybe i'll start off with that one next time when i'm getting the stream all sorted out but thank you so much everybody for uh being involved i know i ran over time a little bit but i'll probably aim for these to be about two hours long um and now i thought of a thing i could do um Oh yeah, well my, my my YouTube channel is uh yeah just just it's only just started it's only gonna be one video I'm gonna put this together and put it up for other people so they can see it um oh what happened oh wait sorry no we're good we're good I just had a technical thing where it looked like chat vanished um yeah so I'm I'm gonna aim to do this fairly regularly uh yeah every week at least for now while I can do it and yeah I'll put it up on on as a proper video later on on YouTube. Um, just one second. I'm, I'm going to be fully vamping for a few minutes, so uh, I don't need to be here just yet. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Um, so that's my producer telling me about what to do. Um, so, yeah, um, what was I going to say? Oh, yes. Um, yeah, thank you so much uh, for the people who already <laughs> liked liked the thing before it was even anything. I was like, ha, huh, I could just not do it now. And then I'm 100% I'm likes. I didn't even do anything. Yeah, that's an economy. Um, but yes, thank you so much for sticking around, everybody. Thanks to anyone who managed to get in for a little bit. It's been great. Um, feeling like a big time person uh, with an audience doing stuff on the YouTube. So yeah, don't forget to do the things. Now, in terms of, of a like and subscribe, I had a thought. I think I'm just going to be like, I'm going to do. A, I'm going to. I'm going to see. Just in, if you get a dodgy for one second, I'm not going to see if this works. Uh, put this Word document. I'm going to change it up a little bit because I don't want to say the same old thing like and subscribe all the time. So uh, I'm going to do a new version, see if this works. That's not, that's already a link because of that top link. Oh, look, this is my stub. I should make sure I don't save this. Um, okay, let's go. Don't forget like and subscribe. What I'm going to do is just going to use like... Um, the thesaurus to change all these words into the, the longest word so I can make a new version of this. And so people don't, people who are sick of that, that's the same, but it's different. 
So we're going to go synonyms. Nothing. Okay, so I'll leave that one as it is. Forget synonyms. Don't fail to remember uh, why is it just, it's, it's rebelling. Oh, it's saving. Why don't you want me to do this? Uh, ah, the system. Oh, there we go. It's come back. Synonyms, don't forget, don't fail to remember in the direction of uh, love, in, in the direction of love and oh, big Microsoft is coming after me. They don't want me to do this. Uh, 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 synonyms, hmm, in addition to, hmm, in addition to synonyms, endorse, endorse. Don't fail to remember in the direction of love in addition to endorse. Yeah, uh, maybe not love. That's a bit. That's a bit of a strong language. Well, yeah, we'll get there. Maybe not just yet. Uh, synonyms, friendship. <laughs> yeah. So don't fail to remember in the direction of friendship in addition to endorse. Uh, thanks for being here for this first one. Um, uh, yeah, thanks for being along with me, and I'll see you again next time. Bye.